another one and today I'll be doing a card tip segment on Exodia because I really want to clear up a lot of the misunderstandings on Exodia's effect, the way it works. The best way you can utilize, you know, obtaining Exodia's win condition and how to actually slow down your opponent or, you know, be able to counter them from, you know, obtaining Exodia's win condition. So let's get on to it. We are going to search for Exodia so you guys can see its effect. EXO. There we go. Um, all right. Exodia effect is if you have the right leg of the forbidden one, left leg, right arm, left arm, in addition to this card in your hand, you win the duel. Now, to clarify it, this is not a monster effect that can be negated. This is a win condition, such as when your opponent's life points hit zero or they deck out. It is not something that can be stopped by cards like Solemn Strike or Divine Wrath or, or um, it's a continuous trap card. I think it's called Mind, um, what's it, Mind Crush or something like that. It's, uh, hold on, I'll, I'll search for that card right now so you guys can see. Um, it also cannot be stopped um, by that card effect. Uh, let me see, what's that card in reference to again? Go uh, skill drain because uh, it's a series of like th three of them a skill drain, mind drain, and something else. The other one it negates the activation of monster effects in the hand, which that card is really good against um, psi frames that people so often hate. So you can utilize where is it? No, not that. Uh, Let's see, let's see. Radio Mind Drain. The effect of monsters in the hand cannot be activated. So this is really good against side frames. But um, you cannot use effects like Mind Drain to negate the effect of Exodia, the Forbidden One. Because it is a win condition. We used to extreme mastery. And yeah, I have blue eyes, white dragon. Um... Yeah, uh, you cannot negate the effect of Exodia's Forbidden One since it's a win condition. So, as I've said, no Solemn Strike, no Divine Wrath, nothing like that. Yeah, I do also have Rebellion Dragon. Um, let's go back to Exodia. And details. Alright. Exodia is a spellcaster type dark, so he can be combo with cards like a law of darkness and uh, What's the quick play spell card again? Uh, magical dimension so you can like Tech just ahead of Exodia in your deck you can summon it to the field and then your opponent may misread you and think that you are playing an Exodia deck that can um, incorporate getting Exodia from your graveyard to your hand you can then use magical dimension and you know go into your dark magician type players and it would really throw your opponent off because they would begin reading you for Exodia the forbidden one uh, for an uh, Exodia type deck you know being able to gain the win condition and um, tips on getting Exodia into your hand effectively for a win condition um, it's just making sure that your deck has a lot of draw power as well as cards that can assist with getting Exodia from your deck to your hand. Um, there are a decent number of cards that can do that from the deck to your hand. You can use the effect of Vampire Dragon, Sphere of Chaos, uh, Emissary of the Afterlife. Um, and keep in mind that Emissary of the Afterlife, when its effect go off, it allows both players to add a normal monster, which would be uh, the right, left leg, and the le right and left arm 
of the forbidden one from your deck to your hand as well as if your opponent has normal monsters in their deck there you are both allowed to add those to your hand you can also add um add the other pieces of exodia to your hand via blue dragon summoner's effect um dragonity Corsisca, I, I think that's how it's pronounced something like that spellbook star hall chaos zone dugu single purchase um and well sangin and magician of black chaos were banned so you, you can i th yeah they're banned so you can't really use them in this game to add um any of the exodia pieces from your deck to your hand um mastery technique in regards to what the deck or play style or uh yeah there would be the ways that can you can utilize getting ex um the exodia pieces from your deck to your hand um you can use deep diver as well to place an exodia piece from inside your deck to the very top of your deck so that that would be the next card that you draw and one of the best and most efficient ways of getting all five pieces of exodia into your hand is simply by milling it into the graveyard and then using card effects like dark eruption that can bring the head of exodia back in your hand dark eruption is also a decent spell card it it can it really helps with black wing type players because you know they can special summon themselves so if you go into and see into a synchro you can play dark eruption out of black the a black wing from your graveyard back to your hand i think it's once it's attack is 1500 or less which exodia falls in that category and i think it's black wing the whirlwind or something like that that can cut your opponent's attack in half and defense um, a lot of the black wings fall in that category so using uh, cards like dark eruption you can put the head of exodia back in your hand as well as monster reincarnation which is really used in decks that mill a lot like light swans you can send uh, one card from your hand to the graveyard and then add uh, one monster from your graveyard back to your hand and then one of the best uh, spells in the game that allows you to go two for one is Dark Factory of Mass Production. So if you're running like a normal fusion deck, you can then uh, after fusing with the normal monsters, when you play ma um, Dark Factory of Mass Production, you can add two of those normal monsters back to your hand, which uh, all the other pieces of Exodia fall under that category. So you can add two back to your hand. You can also play like you can summon like the left arm, leg, or, or left or right arm. No, left and right arm or leg to the field, and then play. I think it's called. Oh, uh, what's that card? Wait, let me see. Let me just mean that piece right quick. Uh, I trying to remember what this card right here. White elephant's gift. You can summon it, play White Elephant's Gift so that you can draw two cards and then you can revive the piece back from the graveyard off Dark Factory. And then the best card that allows you to add the most uh, Exodia pieces uh, into your hand is Backup Soldiers. It allows you one, two, or five or more um, monsters in the graveyard. You can then target three and then add them to your hand so you can like pitch off uh, numerous pieces of Exodias to draw it foolish them into the graveyard and then use a combination of dark eruption dark factory of mass production and one backup soldier so you can play one of each like in a single turn once you acquire dark eruption dark factory of mass production and one backup soldier in hand and you're able to mill all five pieces into the grave once you play each one of those cards which mean in those three one dark factory one dark eruption and one backup soldier you automatically place all five pieces of Exodia from your graveyard into your hand, thus acquiring Exodia's win condition. Um, it it all depends on matchup mastery because um, using an Exodia deck against someone who is using a stall type deck or trying to acquire a win condition as well, Exodia would usually trump that. Um, to say using a rebellion dragon deck against an exodia deck it just depends on 
what someone's car choices are in terms of stall and negation uh, for the Exodia deck, depending on its deck speed. And like with a decent amount of my builds, I do run a card that's called, um, I think it's Dark Epidemic Virus that really destroys a lot of spell cards. So if the Exodia deck runs a lot of spell cards and that and doesn't really utilize a decent amount of monster effects like i think it's the exodia turbo that runs a lot of spells like once i activate that my opponent would lose all their uh spell effects because they'll be destroyed as well as every other spell for the next three turns are automatically destroyed and then i can see all cards on their field and in their hand so um it just depends on the build of your exodia deck and what its actual aim is um, I do have an Exodia deck build, not now, but I did. It's comboed with Mookie Mookie. You can check it out on the channel. It's called the Forbidden Mookie. Um, you'd want to check that out. That's really good because I did end up in an Exodia matchup. Even though the Exodia, the Mookie Mookie Exodia deck doesn't focus on obtaining Exodia's win condition. If I'm in a situation where my opponent's stalling, I can then acquire Exodia in the process, but the deck is mainly to actually reduce my opponent's life points to zero. Um, on this game, yeah, I do. I mean that I play, yeah, and then everything else would be like, if I don't have it, then I would build it and then, you know, just show it off for whoever requests it. And then... Uh, we'll go with uh, how you can get around stopping your opponent from acquiring Exodia. You can use cards like um, Mistake um, because it prevents the opponent from adding cards from the deck to, to the hand, which that's what Exodia decks mainly do between draw and add um, the pieces from the deck to the hand. So you can play cards like Mistake, uh, Mask Hero, Dark Law, um, also, if you can put your opponent in a situation, because I've been in situations where I faced Exodia decks, and I try to cause my opponent to use more of their hand resources than necessary, leaving like only the Exodia pieces and, and maybe another card, and I would play uh, a spell card that I use to speed up a lot of my decks called Hand Destruction, which causes both players to discard two cards and draw two cards. So if mainly all of the cards in my opponent's hand is Exodia pieces and they just have one extra card, they then have to mill an Exodia piece to the graveyard, leaving it vulnerable by an, by an effect like, um, what is it called, Soul Release or uh, DD Crow, stuff like that, that you can just banish the piece out of the game. And usually once an Exodia piece is banished out of the game, um, you have at least 99 percent guaranteed your win because most exodia decks that revolve around sending exodia to the graveyard drawing milling exodia to the graveyard and then putting them back in his hand requires a lot of cards to focus on that and not actually bringing the exodia piece from out of play back into hand Um, it, it really all comes down to deck matchup mastery. It really all, it really all does. Cause like you can play a generic style deck, like with no real beaters in it. But if your timing in terms of your ability to counter your opponent's move, um, is on point, you are always going to have the upper hand. And even if it's a really good deck, um, you can check out my video on how to ultimately deck build. That's also uh, on the channel where I build a deck from scratch for you guys, uh, uh, generic rank four, and showed you just how effective it could be uh, in duels. And I ran into what a uh, burning abyss uh, deck, and like I like it, watch the video, you're gonna see exactly how I got over a lot of the effects, timing, and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, to be able to counter your opponent, you know, acquiring Exodia in the hand, using or having cards like Trishula or the Sky Radio Cyframe Lord Omega, being able to cut a card out of the hand, you know, it stops them from gaining Exodia's win condition. Um, as well as 
you want to make sure you can either have card effects that can cause your opponent dump their hand into the graveyard um you know uh or reshuffle i think one of those is a trap card called t strategy it causes your opponent to take their hold on place it in the deck shuffle and draw the same amount of cards using cards like that will disrupt your opponent from obtaining exodia's win condition in hand like i said either causing them to dump exodia in the graveyard and then banishing a piece um using monster effects that banish like trishula is also excellent because if you can cause them to mill a piece of exodia in the graveyard or if they mill a piece before they can revive it you can use trishula's effect to banish one out of the graveyard banish a card on their field as well as um you may have a decent percentage chance of banishing one of the exodia pieces out of their hand as well making sure or which would ensure that your opponent cannot obtain exodia's win condition um and also if your opponent has a heavy draw engine if you can get them to like let's say you play it's a card called moment i think one day of peace let me go to that right here right if if your opponent has a piece of exodia in the graveyard or that they can't get to and they only have um if they have no cards left in their deck and you play one day of peace it would force them to draw and because they have no cards in their deck they would deck out which is a win condition just like exodia's effect and the duel would end and there was a bit of controversy with chains and obtaining exodia's effect because um there was a situation where a guy played like this um how to put it it was like a bunch of draw cards in a chain i think it's like he would give his opponents life points and then play um hope for escape and draw a bunch of cards and what he ended up doing is he uh off one of the hope of escapes effect it caused him to draw one additional card more than he had in his deck to spare even though exodia was in his hand the effect of decking out not the effect but the the win condition of decking out when priority over exodia's win condition effect let's say he had six cards in his deck and hope for escape told him that he would have to have drawn seven because of the life points difference when he when he would have drawn six and needed to have drawn seven because he didn't draw that seventh card out of his deck the win condition of decking out was priority first so he lost even though he had exodia the forbidden one already assembled in hand so you want to keep in mind that um when you are trying to acquire exodia the forbidden one with those massive draw plays that you don't cause yourself to deck out in the process before exodia's win condition can be finalized also um there has been controversy on burn chains with exodia such as let's say your opponent plays a card effect like i think it's secret secret barrel or something like that that burns your opponent for like 200 points for every card they control and in their hand and let's say it would reduce the opponent's life points to zero let's say they activate that and you activate uh, a card effect that you know allows you to draw or numerous card effects that allows you to draw as long as exodia's win condition of acquiring the head and the other four pieces are in hand for his win condition no matter where it is in that chain as long as it's acquired in that chain wherever that chain is once it's acquired exodia's win condition kicks in and the chain no longer continues to resolve therefore in a situation where you would have been burnt to death or got burned to death once exodia was acquired before the first effect that would have gone off would be the last effect to go off in the chain before that effect to burn you for all of your life points actually goes through once exodia is acquired you then win the duel without the chain continuously result without the chain continuing to resolve um yeah i think that covers it for exodia the forbidden one um so far blocking your opponent from playing what technique you do um mastery are you talking in regards to an exodia deck or 
just in general because if you're asking in general it depends on the matchup because once i know what my opponent's playing then i'd be able to strategize and then you know make plays so i could be able to counter their next move before they're actually able to make it um but i think that about covers it for exodia the forbidden one if any of you guys missed the stream from the start um once the video is done it would automatically be uploaded to youtube so you can recap um, how you can effectively utilize Exodia the Forbidden One as well as how to you know be able to counter someone who's using Exodia the Forbidden One. Um, I'm just waiting to see if Extreme Mastery uh, is going to respond before I end this live stream but yeah um, in a chain when a chain goes off like I said wherever Exodia is required except if there's the deck out the deck out win condition if your opponent or you deck so even though you guys have exodia in hand you still lose because the win condition of decking out would always go into effect before exodia's effect because you have to draw um to complete the the card's resolution of its effect before exodia's win condition effect kicks in and if that's all um until next time guys later oh um well rebellion dragon versus blue eyes i would say that blue eyes is stronger because for rebellion dragon once rebellion dragon's effect kicks in it has to um how to put it destroy a level seven or lower monster to gain like its triple attack otk requirement and blue eyes is eight so blue eyes would always be stronger than rebellion dragon in terms of power so um you want to be wary of that but they both have 3k and you can also re-pendulum summon the rebellion dragon back after he runs into a blue eyes but um knowing and seeing how a blue eyes deck runs in functions you're gonna have multiple 3k beaters on board so they can clash into rebellion and still you know hit you directly for a numerous amount of 3ks so um blue eyes is gonna always have the upper hand on rebellion dragon so you always want to keep that in mind because rebellion dragon cannot use its effect to destroy blue eyes because blue eyes is level eight so you want to keep that in mind if you can clear out all the blue eyes and then initiate its effect on a hoe with eyes of blue or any other lower level monster that blue eyes utilizes and then you can otk like that but you do not want to run into a blue eyes deck with a uh, um rebellion dragon deck trust me that matchup would not be suitable for you it's it's actually a matchup that i I'd say 80% you are supposed to lose see blue eyes are so effective because like I told people when you look at what's going on in today's current meta um, cards like uh, solemn strike and stuff like that they are mainly targeting monsters with effects because they are the monsters that are coming into this game now you know they have so many uh, annoying and difficult effects to get over that the current cards uh, in the meta they are being more heavily focused on them whereas blue eyes has no effect and because it's a normal dragon type monster you know normal monsters have a decent amount of support in this game and with blue eyes being a dragon you can use cards like return of the dragon lords which protects revives and protects the blue eyes on top of that with you know cards like uh it's a trap card besides call of the haunted i think it's called birthright that can also bring blue eyes back because it's a normal monster um like i said normal monsters have a decent amount of support as well as with blue eyes being a uh, level eight you can play cards like trade in so you can draw two and blue eyes with their two stones can either add a blue eyes from your deck to your hand or it can you know at the end phase special summon a blue eyes or dragon spirit of white from your deck straight to the field so and as well as it can i think it's ancient stone it can then 
place a blue eyes from your graveyard into your hand by banishing itself so it blue eyes just as a uh, way more than a decent amount of support like their support is really awesome they aren't at full power in this game because of the new releases of blue eyes cards you know just to be fair if all the blue eyes cards were in the game then you can say yeah you can play a blue eyes deck at full power but in this game still blue eyes is still a big thing a threat you're going to run into a lot of blue eyes decks so you want to make sure that you can prepare for those kinds of things so that blue eyes just doesn't you know um trip you down kick you in your side stomp you in your chest and you know poop all over your face and make your deck look like garbage you want to be able to counter stuff like that so um it and with Dragon Spirit of White, even if you have a decent amount of trap cards, like once it comes to the field, it starts banishing them. So, you know, that's also an issue. Um, Mastery, it just all depends on the Exodia build. Um, like I said, if Rebellion Dragon can get out there and OTK, then, you know, Exodia isn't going to stand a chance. And it, is, it depends on the disruption methods or card choices of a user that they place in their Exodia deck that can either, you know, slow down the opponent or stop them from attacking on the whole. So, you know, it's basically player preference in terms of card choices, um, being able to counter your opponent from reducing your life points to zero. Let's say my opponent is in a burn matchup with an Exodia, then, you know, the pressure is really on for Exodia to quickly come to the hand um before they get their life points burnt out because usually an exodia deck is not really offensive um the one i did with the forbidden mookie or mookie mookie um it's offensive as well as if need be it can get exodia to the hand so it, it just depends on the build on what you know player card choices on what they decide to put in or feel is necessary on you know acquiring exodia's win condition um and i think that'll be it we're almost on the half hour mark you know i don't want to make these too long so you guys can recap and understand how to utilize our cards effectively as well as be able to counter them effectively or as best as you can like i say if you want to counter exodia you want to try to cause your opponent to mill a piece into the graveyard or and then banish it um trishul is excellent at that as well as you can use cards to slow down their draw power such as mistakes so that they don't add hey what do you say shadow you, you come and catch the live broadcast near the end <laughs> um you want to you know slow down your opponent's potential draw power by using a uh, dark hero um sorry sorry mask hero dark law so you can punish them for it and also banish a card then you know causing them to mill and then you know once you banish a piece of Exodia, you have like 99% secured your victory. And like I said, the most effective way that I've seen Exodia um, to be summoned is simply by just milling all of the pieces into the graveyard and then placing Marid back into the Han using Dark Eruption, Dark Factory of Max Production, and Backup Soldiers. So, yeah, that's the most effective way. Um, I've seen people use, like I said, a turbo style where they just play a lot of spells. Um, it can be countered if you have Ghost Dog in hand because they usually use Royal Magical Library to draw additional cards. So when Library's effect go off, you can chain Ghost Ogre, destroy the Library, or you can chain Effect Vila and negate the Library's effect. And it shuts down their draw engine from, you know, doing that to you in one turn. And if you notice in most of my deck builds, I have three effect velas or two effect velas and three ghost ogres or two ghost ogres three effect velas so it, when i do run into um deck builds like that i can easily counter them in the matchup so yeah uh that's it for exodia i'll be doing another card tip segment tomorrow so until next time later